Science is important for a person of faith for many reasons. We need to reconcile the conflicts that exist between what science is teaching and what natural science is teaching today. And to do this, we need to have a good understanding of science. It is also important to remember that what science is exploring today is God's creation. And so through the many scientific discoveries, we can develop a better appreciation of who our Father is. It's also important to keep in mind that, that what we're studying in science is God's created word. Psalms 33, 6 says, By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, their starry host by the breath of his mouth. We can learn much about God's invisible qualities, his eternal power and divine nature through the scientific exploration of his creation. Proverbs 3, 19 says, <clears throat> The Lord by wisdom founded the earth. By understanding, he established the heavens. The wisdom of the Word of God is evident in the complexity of the universe, which runs just like clockwork, not the random chaos one would expect in a cosmos formed naturally. Scientists had described this precision through what are known as scientific laws. These laws are descriptions of observed phenomena that are, are generally expressed as a single mathematical equation. For example, Sir Isaac Newton uh, devised an equation that it calculates the strength of gravity based on the mass and distance between two objects. Or his famous second law of thermodynamics, shown here, force equals mass times acceleration. Einstein uh, devised his e equals mc squared, the mass energy equivalence formula. Or up at the very top, you see the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, and on and on and on. It has been argued that, that uh, the belief in God, a lawgiver, was in fact the basis for the concept of the scientific law. That the cosmos would be governed by unchanging constants flowed rather freely from a belief in God. Rather than chaos, randomness, and disorder, uh, as one would expect in the universe birthed from a cosmic accident like the Big Bang, we find that clockwork precision governs the cosmos at every level. Sir Isaac Newton, we mentioned before, is quoted here. He believed in God in addition to being the founding father of, uh, of, of many of our scientific laws. He was the co-inventor of calculus. He said, this most beautiful system of the sun, planets, and comets could only proceed from the counsel and dominion of an intelligent being. Well, in fact, prior to the 20th century, the majority of scientists held to this view. Most of the founding fathers of the very science disciplines believed the God of the Bible created the cosmos and were very committed to the existence of God for most Christianity. People like uh, Sir Isaac Newton, uh, Johannes Kepler, Robert Boyle, Nikolai Copernicus. Moreover, because they believed that cosmos was designed, they expected it that it would be intelligible to the human intellect, which led to the scientific revolution. Many view that by investigating his creation, they were getting to know the mind of God. Well, in addition to there being information that, that behind the physics of the cosmos, we've also discovered that there's information governing the biological world. This biological information exists in the cells of all organisms as this complex molecule we call DNA, deoxyribonucleic acid that's shown here. Well, DNA carries complex coded instruction that tells cells how to make proteins. And proteins are the machinery and material that make life possible. They are the building blocks for many structures like, like our hair and our fingernails are made of pure protein. They also serve as the enzymes for all of your metabolic processes like digestion of food. They also uh, serve as the countless molecular machines that we find inside cells, like the kinesin showed here, a little transport vehicle, if you will, that's transporting a package called a vesicle down a, a highway within the cell. Well, the fact that DNA is coded information causes it to stand as the single most powerful argument for intelligent design that exists. Because in all human experience, Information invariably originates from an intelligent source, from a mind or personal agent. Well, when it was discovered that information governed the biological world, it should have led to the conclusion that that information was also the result of an intelligent mind. Because that's how science is supposed to work. You're supposed to use your past knowledge, your past experiences, to inform your observations and reach co correct conclusions. Well, since intelligence is the only known cause of 
specified information, the presence of such information bearing sequences in biological systems points definitively to a designing intelligence behind life on Earth. Well, the, ladies and gentlemen, the amount of information packed into each cell of our body is mind-boggling. To help illustrate this, we need to uh, understand that the, the DNA molecule is like a ladder. So, you see the, see the molecule shown here at the right? Uh, it's like a ladder that's twisted. Well, each step or rung along that ladder can be made of four, one of four different possible nucleotides that are abbreviated by the letters A, T, C, and G. What you see here on the screen is DNA sequencing data, a series of these A, T, Cs, and Gs, this code that instructs cells how to make proteins and, and even what to do with them afterwards. Well, if these letters, these A, T, Cs, and Gs are equivalent to the letters in our alphabet, then the amount of information in one human cell is, is equivalent to the information that's in a thousand books. Or to put it another way, a pinhead sized pile of DNA, a little pile of DNA the size of a pinhead, two millimeters in size, contains as much information as there are in 500 stacks of books reaching the moon or a single stacks of, stack of books reaching all the way to the sun. Well, where do evolutionists say all of this information came from? Well, they can't credit it to a designing intelligence, so the only other source they have available is random natural causation, and to them, it's mutations. They argue that random changes to this genetic code, to this information, gave rise to more information. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that assertion is an affront to logic, it's an affront to reason, and it's an affront to common sense to suggest that you can randomly change coded information and create new information because everyone knows all that will happen is that you destroy the information. Well, the interpretation that is most consistent with our observations and experience is that this information, genetic information, was also the result of an, of an intelligent mind, that is, to God. Francis Crick, shown here, was one of the co-discoverers of the DNA helix. He won the Nobel Prize in 1962 for the discovery of the DNA helix. He admits to evidence of design, but says that we must constantly keep in mind that what we see was not designed, but rather evolved. Ladies and gentlemen, God has made the world with abundant evidence that it was created. But why can these naturalists not see the truth? Well, Paul speaks to this in Romans. <coughs> He says, for since the creation of the world, his invisible attributes, his eternal power and divine nature have been clearly seen, being understood through what has been made so that they are without excuse. For even though they knew God, they did not honor him as God or give thanks, but they became futile in their speculations and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing to be wise, they became fools. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the nature of science today. They simply refuse to acknowledge the truth of what they see. But truly, ladies and gentlemen, we can learn about God's invisible qualities by observing what He has, been, what he has made. His eternal, his, his invisible qualities, His divine attributes are clearly seen. God has made a world full of wonders because He is wonderful. He has made beautiful things because He is beautiful and wanted to reveal that part to us. He made things that are tremendously complex and mysterious because He is beyond our understanding. He made things that are, we constantly marvel at because He is marvelous. He made things of enormous power because He is powerful. Truly, His eternal power and divine nature are on display within the creation to reveal Himself to us.